Okay, here is a review. I will try to post this to YouTube as well and to Facebook. What I'd like to do is let's catch everybody up because there's so many coming to the you know to the Torah right now, wanting to learn Hebrew. The Hebrew we are re we are looking at lit liturgical Hebrew so that we can read the Hebrew text. I don't think it's very necessary to speak Hebrew in this current day because everybody in Israel, most of them speak English. But what it is important to do is to read the Hebrew text. So here's the text again, since we are now recording. This is called the first Hebrew primer, third edition. Um, and then it's the adult beginners um, path, the adult beginners path to biblical Hebrew by Simon Reznikov and Moltzkin. Okay, this book is what we are using. There are flashcards that Cassandra has gotten. She seems to like them. There is an answer key if you would like it. It's like $9.95 or something like that, super cheap. Um, there's also an Audible. I downloaded the Audible just to see if it was any good. <laughs> it's a Yiddish speaker from New Jersey or something, and she's got a thick Eastern accent, and it doesn't really have the Israeli tonation that I would have preferred it to have. It is very much, um, it's very <clears throat> Yiddish sounding. She knows her stuff, but I'm just saying I wouldn't have bought the Audible, but I did because other people had it and they wanted to see. And I was like, well, let me just see if it's if it's a good source. I would skip the Audible personally. Now, what you'll find in chapters one, two, and three, and you will need to do this on your own. What I want you to study, though, is the Aleph Bet. So you'll have to go through some of the exercises, those of you catching up, but you can reach out or get the answer guide. Um, it tells you in this book, the sound of every letter. Now, the one thing that is a bit distressing at the beginning, it doesn't tell you the name of the letters. And I don't know why this doesn't do that, but you can find that in any concordance <clears throat> online in a million places. For whatever reason, <laughs> this book does not actually say how to pronounce, like, it says how to sound out the name, but not the, um, the, how the, how you say it. Okay. Yes. Cassandra. I have a sheet that I found on Facebook that it's literally the same chart, but it also has an extra column that says the name of the actual uh, letters that if Perfect. people put their email in, I can send it to them. Perfect. So, okay. So those of you who want that, uh, and, and, and I can help you, Cassandra could also yeah, send I can it to me you as well. Yeah. Um, and then I can give it to you guys. Um, because there's other books out there and like, you can like, literally my concordance has it. Like you can just Google it, the Hebrew Aleph, but it'll tell you the letters. But what I'd like to go through now with you guys, as you're looking at the page two in the revised edition, we're going to go through, we'll just go through the letters together so that when you are doing this, you can record this and see, I'm going to again, show you the page, um, this, this page right here. So yeah. It's all these different letters. And I'm just going to, I don't know if I can do this very well um, without the glare. But we have, this is backwards. But we have Aleph, Bet. These two letters go together. The one with the Dagesh, which is the, the dot. So without the dot, we say V. With the dot, we say B. Let me back up. Sorry. Aleph is silent. Aleph, you don't say anything. It technically has a sound of airiness to it but you don't really hear it. Um, the bet, so aleph, bet. The bet says b if there's a dagesh, a dot, and v without it. That's why you can say abib or aviv. You can say abba or ava, avraham or abraham. It's the same letter. And certain times people just used a b sound or a v. Those of you who are Spanish speakers completely understand that because the b's sound like v's, like abuela, abuela. You don't really say abuela. You say abuela, you know, if you're a true Spanish speaker. Is that how it is in, in Cuba too, Cassandra? I'm going to tell you that Cuban Spanish is very slang compared to a lot of other Spanish. Okay. So we emphasize a lot of letters really weird. Okay. But we, did, we emphasize the V more than the V. Okay. See, but that's okay, not that's necessarily correct. Okay. Because Jim, the way he grew up in Colorado and his teacher was from like Latin America, and they always said abuela, abuela, what's almost like a V sound instead of a B. Okay, so Aleph, Bet, Gimel. Now, Gimel says G, so 
Fairiness for the Alep, B, V, or G. Dalet is D, D, Dalet. Hey, I'm going to let you, uh, you guys are going to follow along on your page, so I'm not like trying to like do this. Um, the next letter is Hey, and then we have the Vav, V. Some people try to tell you that Paleo Hebrew said W. We don't exactly know. The Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jews both pronounced it different depending on if they went through Northern Europe or Southern Europe. We cannot say. So this is how we get the, the variation between Yahweh or Yahweh. I will pause here and say there are first century writings found among some of the dispersed of Israel that kept the Torah that is in a little colony to the north and east of Israel that always have said Yahweh. Nehemia Gordon believes that's based on the word for Jupiter. I disagree. <laughs> I completely disagree because they were keeping the Torah. They were not eating pork. They were trying to say the name of father and they were not influenced by the Masoret scribes who were the first ones who notably hid the sacred name, fearing that we would profane it or take it in vain if we spoke it. There are sixth century manuscripts of Jewish historians and writings hundreds of them, like over 600 documents where they begin, but not until the sixth century and the Masoret scribes had already stopped pronouncing, said to, said to the people, don't pronounce the name, you'll take it in vain. Remember Jeremiah says the fault, the line priests or ever caused my people to forget my name. Well, they say Yehovah, Yehovah. Now the root of both of those is Yod, He, Vav, He. One is Yahweh, one is Yehovah. With Hebrew, each of those constructs works. Yes. The name that does not work, that has surfaced since 2012, is Yahuwah. Yahuwah doesn't work. Yahuwah is physically impossible in the Hebrew language grammar construct. You can't have three open syllables. You cannot. You can have Yahweh, where you have one open, one closed syllable. Yehovah, yeah. two open, one closed syllable. But you cannot have three open syllables. And it became from a man who misunder didn't know Hebrew. He thought he saw a pattern in the word Yehuda. And he said, well, then it must be Yehuah. Mm -mm. The Greek Septuagint, <clears throat> which was the Greek translation of the Old Testament, <clears throat> you can tell in the translational text was trying to say Yeshua. And you can tell it didn't say Yahshua or Yahusha. They literally had the sounds that produced that, but they don't have the SH sound, so they put an S. And so that's how we got the Yesu. And then for any male name in Greek, they put an S. They were trying to say Yeshua, not Yeshus, right? Or not Ye not not Yahu, because they have a sound, they have a vowel sound, they have a vowel. Or the sound ah in Greek. Ah. And it doesn't say that. It says a, like Yeshua, Yeshua. So we are fairly confident that it's Yeshua. And when you see Yahweh, we do know it was hallelujah. Yah is, any Hebrew knows that's the shortened form of Yah, Yah, Yahweh, Yahweh. So doesn't it make sense when you say hallelujah? That's why I go with Yahweh. And there have been a number of people, three that I know of, who had the father appear to them in dreams, who did not know him, who came to me and said, what am I supposed to do? I don't know who Yahweh is. And he had said in the dream, they believed it was Yahweh or Yahweh. And I said, was it Yahweh or Yahweh? And both, all of them were like, I couldn't tell the difference. I couldn't quite tell. So my thought is, is there something like kind of a combination like the B and the V in Spanish, like the abuela, where you can't ever tell if it's a B or V? Is it something like the Yahweh? <laughs> Yahweh. I don't know, but since they couldn't tell, but I will tell you, he did not come to them. And one was an eight-year-old girl who did not know God at all. And she said, he opened the door, light flowed in, and he said, follow Jim and Melissa. You don't have to stay here in the dark. And she rode on her bicycle to my house. This is a little girl. This was this was in 2005, 2005. That's, 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 that was him. And she didn't know the Bible. She was raised in a really rough, and he said his name was Yahweh. A second one appeared. A lady reached out to me on Facebook and says, 
oh my gosh, you're using the words I've heard in dreams. I don't know what it means. What is Yeshua? What is Yahweh? I don't understand. And she told me her dreams and they were all about judgment coming to America and the church and the lies. And she's in the church and she was confused. She says, I, I, I don't understand. I'm a prophet. And so I am convinced his name is Yahweh or Yahweh, whichever way you want to pronounce that V sound, that Vav sound. And I will stick to that to the day I die. But I also will not judge you if you use a different name because <laughs> praise God, we're, he's going to show us his truth someday. Kiss Andrew. At the expense of possibly confusing some people, but um, is it possible that the Vav could have a Degesh next to it and that Vav could have been like the Bet, where it could have been a W or V sound, depending if it had a Degesh? Anything's possible. They have not discovered one of those in any of the manuscripts, uh, according to my knowledge. However, you're right. They they lost sometimes they didn't use vowel points originally they only use the consonant sounds and so that is a possibility but it's never been noticed mentioned in any of the studies that i've done cassandra but it is a good thought right like was there a difference where sometimes the that vav said v and sometimes w because the b and the v do and then we're going to get to other letters down here where they also do that's a great thought great thought yeah they show us anyway i wanted to point out when we say the names Yahweh, Yahweh, this, these are the letters you're going to be seeing. Okay. So, and that's a great thought that Cassandra had that maybe that sound had two different ones in, in ancient Hebrew. I will tell you those people who are, we get some Torah terrorists out there and they think if you don't do like, if you don't just say it just right, you're going to go to hell. Nah. He says in, ex, in, Gen, in Exodus three, I will be who I will be. You know what? I can guarantee you there's people who believe in Jesus that know him. I can guarantee that people who call him God, who know him, I can guarantee he met people who didn't know any name and he, they know him, right? He will be who he will be. He will meet people where he's at. He's not confusing. He devises means to save us. Now, or should, will, does he want us to know his name? Absolutely. He'll make it known. Anyway, with, um, where was I going with that? Um, okay. oh, the Torah terrorists that, that try to say all these things, but it's like, <laughs> the, fa the fact of the matter is, is there debatable issues and we're not to argue them. And we need to like not argue about these things and just say, Yahweh, show us, teach us, and we're going to try our best. Okay. So we said Aleph, no sound. B, V for the bet, bet. Gimel, G. Dalet, D. He, H. V, Vav. Some people say W. W. Z, Zayin. Het, Het is. Okay. So this is like Johann Sebastian Bach. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Bach. Tet. And then we have Tet. And you're going to follow along on this page as we go through on your book. When you have it, this is page two, again, showing you the Aleph bet. Tet. And then Yod. And then Kaf. Now the Kaf with the Dagesh, that dot in it is the Dagesh. It says it's like Kitty. And when it has no dagesh, it's back to the like. Then we have the the next one is lamed, le, lamed, le, mem, m, noon, n, samer, s. Um, ayin again a silent letter. Technically, there's a little breath sound in Hebrew again. But you don't notice it really. In, now, they do believe that perhaps there was more of a breathy, guttural sound in ancient Hebrew, but they do, do believe that it is digressed, so we don't hear it anymore. And then we have the pe, which is p, oh. if it has the dagesh, and the f, if it's no dagesh. So the dagesh is the dot, so p or f. And then we have sayin, which is t, like in nuts. This is when you say zion, you're actually saying Zion, Zion. If you say Zion, you may get chuckles if you're in Israel because Zion is a male little male part, the male part. <laughs> it's like a little slang male part. They call it the kind of it. So if you say Zion, they'll sometimes chuckle in Israel. <laughs> You'll catch that because they yeah. know what you mean. But Zion is how you say it. Zion, yeah. Zion, like Sevolt. Bonnie, 
the book that you're referring to that you want us to work in, can you please give me the name of it so I can see about getting myself one? Yes. Message me. I put it on the beginning of this. We're recording this now. Okay. I'll put it on again. I'll show it up here again. And then you can, I'm recording this so you can go back through with it. Because once you have the, the, the book, then you can go through it and take these notes with it and reach out. But I'm going in order and you'll go right down it. Oh, and well. you, you want yeah. to find the little sheet that tells you, because for, for some reason, this book tells you the, they show you the Hebrew letters, but they don't tell you how to pronounce it in English. That's what I'm, you'll combine it with something. I, fine I, I understand. Oh. Thank you. Perfect. No problem. So I'll show it again here in a minute. So oh, it's yeah. cyan is t, like sibolt. And then you have um, hoof. Hoof is like a Q sound. K, k, k. Reish. R, it often is rolled a little bit, almost like Spanish. Reish. Roshodesh. Roshodesh. There's a tiny bit of a, of a roll sound now. You don't have to say like Roshodesh. It's Roshodesh. So if you start listening to Hebrew, Baruch Haba, Baruch Haba. Um, and then we have the sheen, which um, if it has the dot, the, the little dagesh on the right, well, that's not dagesh. The dot on the right is sh, with the dot on the left is s, and then tav, t, t, t. Now, the first letter of the Aleph bet is Aleph. The last letter is the tav. I want you to listen to Genesis chapter one podcast on God's little hummingbird. And what you will notice is the Aleph and the Tav correlates to the A and the Z, the Alpha and the Omega. Who tells us he's the Alpha Omega, but he didn't speak Greek. He was speaking Hebrew. So who told us he was the Aleph and the Tav? Who told us? God. Yeshua. Yeshua says, I am the Aleph Tav. Yeshua. Now, you go on an Aleph Tav hunt in your scriptures and start looking through that, the Hebrew text, you guys are going to find some really important stuff because that is his stamp. So here's Genesis chapter one. You're going to be reading this very soon. Danielle, by the way, we said a prayer for you, honey. We said a prayer for you before this all started. We're recording now, but we'll talk about that later. But we did say a prayer for you. Um, here's Genesis chapter one. Bereshit bara Elohim Aleph Tav. Now, Judaism Jews who do not understand who Messiah is, they say that the Aleph Tav is a direct object marker. They say it's, it shows you when and there's going to be a direct object coming. Perhaps. But when Yeshua says he's the Aleph, and they can't, they don't know, they don't know why it's there. They don't know what it is. They're like, we don't understand. We don't know how to pronounce it. They will literally tell you that. So they'll say like, we just use it as a direct object marker. But when Yeshua told us he's the Aleph Tav, and you start looking at the verses with the Aleph Tav, you're going to see right before a directive command, typically before something is said, and where Yeshua is involved in it, wham, you'll see like it's his stamp, it's his seal. Wham, here I am, the Aleph Tav. So let's read in the Hebrew here. So we have Bereshit in the beginning, bara created, Elohim. So Elohim created in the, so in the beginning, Elohim, because remember the verb order, and the subject and verb sometimes switch order in Hebrew. So, Bereshit bara Elohim. So, in the beginning, Elohim created Aleph Tav. Who was with Elohim? Who was creating all things with Elohim? Through whom were all things created? Yeshua. Who is the Aleph Tav? In the beginning, he created Elohim Aleph Tav. Yeshua was right there with him. And Elohim shows Yeshua was with him because you don't want to know what? Elohim is plural. Elohim is the plural masculine form of gods because there is a separate son and a separate father who are both deity and we can worship them. There's the father and the son. So Bereshit bara Elohim Aleph Tav Hashemayim, the heavens, the Haaretz, and the earth. Now you tell me that's not beautiful to see Yeshua's signature who says, I am the Aleph Tav right there in Genesis 1. He says, that, that's me. And what does that mean? See, this is why understanding your mm -hmm. Hebrew language and being able to read it will open up a whole new world to you. What does it mean? It means from the very beginning, Aleph, Tav, the beginning and the end, all of creation was defined right in there. Yahweh had already made plans for Yeshua to come, die at Passover, rise on Feast of First Fruits, give us the Holy Spirit. 
And he made plans in that Aleph Tav, in the whole story of the history of the earth, for Yeshua to return at Feast of Trumpets, to judge the world on the Day of Atonement, and to start reigning on Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, and dwell with us for a thousand years. In that plan of Aleph Tav, everything spoken was already planned for Bonnie, for Hannah, for Isabel, for Cassandra, for Danielle, for Christy, for Jody, for Laura, for Paris. Every single thing of the earth's story was created the very beginning. In the beginning, he created Hash, uh, um, Elohim Aleph Tav. The very first and the last. And all things are about Messiah. In Colossians chapter 2, when the when Paul says, do not let them regard uh, judge you in regards to you know food and drink and new moons, festivals and Sabbaths. Because why? Because they are a shadow of things to come and the substance is of Christ. Don't let them judge you when you are keeping God's ways. Everything in the Torah is about our Messiah. The sacrifices teach us about our Messiah. Every single thing from the beginning and the end. This earth was recreated for a Messiah. This earth was created with a Messiah in mind. There was no accidents. God did not get surprised that we messed up. God did not get surprised that Adam and Hava, Adam and Hava failed. God did not get surprised. He said, I know this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. So I need to send a savior. So at this point, I'm going to reveal to Abraham my covenant that's coming. At this point, I'm going to make the promise with Noah. At this point, this and this and this and this and this. And I don't know if you guys are getting chills like I am, but the Holy Spirit is so strong on me right now. I'm just like, black eye and everything. Let's go. Um, my husband told me, by the way, the funny thing, he goes, you can't go out. He goes, you're going to get me thrown in jail. It looks like I did that. I'm like, no, <laughs> everybody knows I'm a farmer. I said, oh, but you better be nice. I can, I could play this one up. But it was my cow, milking the cow. Those of you watching later, why I had this beautiful barnyard makeup um, is because my cow decided to hit my brow today. So I don't always look like this. <laughs> anyway, isn't that beautiful? Here's the other thing. Like when you're reading the book of Genesis, you're going to get to the, the chapter where it says, Yahweh made them male and female. But in the Hebrew, it says the word Zachar. And then you stop because this is what happened to me because I'm just reading it in Hebrew and I'm like, wait a minute. Zachar means remember. So a male is a remembrance of Messiah, of Yahweh. And therefore, when I look at a man, a human, I am to remember the creator and always treat them with respect because they are made in the image of their remembrance. They're a remembrance of the creator. Isn't that beautiful? The Hebrew language, the English doesn't translate that. The English doesn't do it. And this is what we want you to be able to do. Again, here's the book. Message me privately. Um, just send me a message and then I'll send you the link on Amazon, for the Amazon. But it's the first Hebrew primer, third edition by Simon Reznikov and Motzkin. Um, it's the adult beginner's path to biblical Hebrew. The first Hebrew primer. It is orange. You can find used copies sometimes, sometimes not. If you need help purchasing it, please reach out to Cassandra or myself. Um, we have bought a lot of books for people. So if you need help, let us know. Now, as you go, we're in chapter seven as a group, okay? We're in chapter seven as a group. I want this just to refresh here. We are doing a refresher for those cats. Catching up. So this can be a video for all of you later to reference. Okay. When you go through the first three chapters, what you're going to learn is how to pronounce and read these Hebrew Aleph Bet letters. In Hebrew, we read from right to left. We do not read from left to right. And the you put the consonant and then the vowel sound under it. Consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel. It will explain all of that in the writing since we have already gone through that. And this could be a long video if I go through all three chapters like that. We're not going to do that. But it will teach you the vowel sounds. And so you're going to go through and learn those vowel sounds. And the book is extremely, extremely easy to follow along. So... 
I'm going to point out on page three, when you get your book, you will see the little vowel sound that looks like an, a T and then a dash. If that's under your letters, it says ah, ah, like in yacht. So then if I had a bet with the little, um, what is it called, a patek, um, or there's different names for the vowels, then you would say ba, ba. And so what it goes through in a very simplistic way is teaches you how to use the consonants and vowels. You are basically in Hebrew kindergarten. What I'm going to do on page four, since Danielle is driving, and since Cassandra does not feel well, I'm going to read for you page four, reading practice. I want you to follow along later with me. Those of you who don't have this, I want you to get the book or reach out. We'll get you hooked up here. On line one, it is a, 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 ba, 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 ga, ga, a, va, ga, ba, a. Okay. You will practice that. Perhaps I should slow down. <laughs> line two. A, ba, ga, a, va, ga, da, 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 a, da, ba, ba. Line three, ha, da, ga, va, ha, a, va, da, a, ha, ha, da, hug. Line four, va, 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 ha, da, va, a, ba, va, va, ga, da, Dog. Line five. Da, va, ha, a, va, va, ba, ga, a, da, ba, a, av. Finally, line six. A, ba, ba, ga, da, ha, va, da, Va, ha, ba, ga, gav. You can now listen to that and read with that. Please practice as many times as it takes for you to get it down. When I taught first grade, I did not teach kindergarten. I did teach first grade. It was extremely important to understand and recognize your combination consonant vowel sounds before we go on to anything else. So yes, we're in Hebrew kindergarten. The next vowel we're going to learn about is the one that says E. So we have the one that says I, ah, I'm sorry, and then E. And it can be written under this the, the consonant with a dot or with a dot and the yod. And so that will explain that on page four to you. On page five, it goes through some lookalike letters that can confuse certain people. It points that out for you to be aware. I am suggesting to make yourself flashcards or invest, what is it, 15 bucks or 12 bucks? Cassandra, how much were the flashcards? I'm pretty sure they were under 20. They were over 20. Okay, they weren't over 20. Yeah. If, you, if that's easier for you, do it. Yeah. Or... Because Cassandra is extremely busy. But if you have the time, I will tell you, if you can write these Hebrew letters as you're saying them, you will have that um, kinesthetic type of movement with your hand that actually helps your brain remember it better. So if you make your own flashcards, because I think Danielle writes her words all the time. Like I think she writes her Hebrew out and practices that. I'm not sure if Cassandra does or not, but I wrote out the letters when I was learning yes. the letters, the, the flashcards that come with the set do not have the letters by themselves. It's only the words starting from chapter four, uh, chapter four um, vocabulary. Thank you for clarifying that. So make You're yourself Aleph Bet flashcards, play games, make your children play games, make your husband play games. We did it for part of our homeschooling. That's what we did. Make your grandchildren play games, get, get, you know, make the cards, make a generic board, and just <laughs> practicing the letters. All you gotta do is roll dice, have some game pieces. There just has to be no objective other than just keep going around. Kids don't even know. Believe me, I did this every 
we did this all year. I homeschooled my son the entire way. We used the same game board for anything we were studying. <laughs> and it was just fun to them because you rolled the dice, moved a certain amount, picked up a card, or you, and then you got to roll goal again, right? If you got it right. So it's just a fun thing to do. Um, <clears throat> there are some exercises that I highly suggest doing. It seems repetitive, but repetition is the key to learning. And perfect practice makes perfect. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So practice doing it over and over until you understand this chapter. Then we go to chapter two and we look at a few more. Um, we're going to look at a few more vowels. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. <clears throat> so the two dots this way, can you tell I'm drinking milk and I'm giving myself phlegm? That's great. Um, the two dots say A. And just like the E sound can be made with one dot and a yold, A can also be made with the two dots and a yold. So A. Then we also have E, just like in bed. So we have the three dots, kind of like a, like a bowling ball. You know, boop, two, three dots. Okay. Then it takes you through how to practice reading those words. I am going to only read a couple lines for you. You guys, now, once you go to your chapter, you're like, okay, study these sounds of these letters of the Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, I am, Pei, Fei. Study the sounds, look at those vowels, and practice. I will do line one and three <clears throat> on page nine. Leil, let, all, all, lace, Le, le, lama. Lama is why? Why? Line three. Need, nave, nel, not, ne, nail, nays, nacha. Now you can practice on your own. Please feel free to message me and say, hey, uh, can I read you line two on page nine? Did I get this right? I honestly don't mind. You might not get an immediate response, but within a day or two, I get back to you. Then we go through the last five letters and vowels on page 10. <clears throat> the Vav with a dot at this point above it says, oh, the Vav with the dot in the middle doesn't become a different letter. It says, ooh. So we have the dot above a word to the top left says, oh. The vav with the dot above it says, oh. So the vav functions as a vowel in this case. The vav functions as a vowel to say, ooh, when you have the vav with the dot within it. So then it says, ooh. Now, the three dots under it also say ooh. And you will see all this on page 10 in this book once you get the, your, your text. I'm doing this for a review to catch the new learners up to speed. Now, sheen and seen. You have the seen with the dot on the right. When that dot is on the right, but it also has an O sound, you will only have one dot, not two dots. The dot will be like, if you so, like it, would, it will just say so. If there's no vowel after it, you know that that dot functions as an O. I just wanted to point that out there. Um, there's a lot of examples in here. It would take us hours to get through this again, but I'm giving you the basis. So again, you can go through it on your own and and see. I do want to point out because, um, so you know how we were talking about yold hey vav hey is either Yahweh or Yehovah. And then I've known three people where they were, they didn't even know his name and he appeared to them as Yahweh, Yahweh. Here is where, again, through a misunderstanding of Hebrew, they could say, Yah, Yahua, right? They could have put in a vowel there. That's again, that could lead to their misunderstanding because understanding the Vav can sometimes say, ooh, it could also say, oh, so I don't know why they don't say Yehoah, <laughs> but 
that is where sometimes that misunderstanding comes as well. I just want to point that out. But grammatically, that's impossible because that leaves three open consonants. It doesn't work. Now, when we go to page 11, there is a reading practice. I want to give you to check yourself. Let's read lines two and four. So when you're doing this, you can check yourself. Am I doing this correctly? Okay, line two on page 11. Reading practice. Kov, kod, kut, kab, kuv, kav, kiz, kuku. Okay, line four. <laughs> Show, shoes, shoot, shok, uh, yeah, shok, sa, seat. I'm sorry, sheet, shove. I got myself confused because I was looking at that one back behind it and my brain wasn't catching up. So I apologize. Let me read line four again so I don't mess you up. Show, shoes, shoot, shok, sha, sheet, shove. Okay, check yourself on those. Catch up to us. Um, then we have the final, the final letter, I'm sorry, the five final letter forms. There are five of these consonants that change form at the ending of the words. And it basically looks at the end of a word, like the bottom of the tail kind of unfolds. So when you look at pet, it literally almost looks like a dalet. You know how the dalet looks like almost like a, like a hangman without the bottom. It looks like a backwards R almost, but it has, the dalet is like this. When it's at the end form of a word and it's the sound and the tail goes longer than the rest of the letters, you'll know that's the end form. It's never going to be in the middle of a word like that, always at the end. So you should be able to understand if it's at the end of a word, even though it looks like a dalet, it is not a dalet. It is the chet in end form. The tail opened up. With mem at the end, this is an opposite thing here. With the letter mem, there's an open little hole on the bottom of that mem until it's at the end. When it comes to the end of the word, it closes up. It closes its mouth up. It like closes the word. When you see the letter nun, n, n, it Again, opens up and drops its bottom leg and comes long below the line. Fe, pe does the same thing. It wraps its tail, opens up that tail and comes down. It's the end form. And then the tsadi, tsadi, um, it does the same thing. Instead of looking like this combination weird tree thing, it opens up and comes all the way down. Those are the end form at the end of a word. In the middle of the word, it keeps its original form at the beginning of a word it has its original form at the end it changes form um the final form of the chet is usually written with the two dots inside and they have no sound um sometimes the a ah appears inside the final form and this is pronounced ha like lecha so you will read along on page 12 once you get that book i'm going to read line one for practice for you to follow along and then you can read the rest. Um lach khach um sorry elecha elecha al alecha sorry I have a I actually have a concussion today so my brain is struggling right now. Alecha banecha sad mitzad Okay, I'm gonna read that again because I literally could feel my brain open and hurt. <laughs> so I'm gonna read that again. Lach, kach, elecha, alecha, banecha, tzad, um, metzad. Okay, Bonnie, I don't think you actually have your hand up. I think Danielle actually does have her hand up. Can't take it off. <laughs> That's okay. I think it's the same way you put it up. You just have to hit that same button. Green's frozen. Oh, then you're fine. We'll just wave at you. Okay, Danielle. 
I was going to say, I can read if it would help you. Perfect. It might. I have a severe concussion. I was, I was all like, yeah, cows hurt. <laughs> I honestly couldn't do anything today. Almost. I had all these plans today and I would like just had to sit on the couch because that was good. It's okay. Okay. So it tells about some summary of pitfalls. Not a big deal. There's a ton of reading practice. I beg you, or I encourage you not to skip it. It seems tedious, but the more you get the, the recognition of the consonants and vowels together and say, I would say, you're going to look crazy to your family. Who cares? Speak it out loud because when you speak it and you write it and you read it and you hear it, it all starts working together. Your senses, the only thing you're not doing is eating it. So if you want to make a cake, you can make cookies in the alphabet shape and then start eating the letters. <laughs> <laughs> say hey we're gonna eat aleph bet cookie letters which i have aleph bet cookie cutters which is fun wow. now one last we're gonna go to chapter three i hope this will help those of you watching later i do think it will i think this is a good refresher to go through the chapters to get us caught up we're probably just going to go through the first three chapters tonight and i'll probably do another refresher for the next three chapters but this will give you guys time because we aren't going to do another hebrew lesson for two weeks um, and then what you need to do is hold, like, get this book, start studying this and catch up. But I do think it's also good for us to start recording these more religiously. And I finally figured out how to download it. Miss tech savvy, almost 50 year old lady trying to figure that out. Um, and so I think going back through these won't hurt anybody. It never hurts to refresh. I can read the Bible a billion times. I can do this a billion times. Oh, look at the little puppy. Look at Chrissy's got a baby. Mm, cute. Now, <laughs> it shows you on page 16 all the vowel sounds you've already learned. And the last vowel is the Shiva. And there are some special situations with the Shiva. It's kind of like the schwa e almost, okay? It's short, like in stupefy. Uh, stupefy. A Shiva at the beginning of a Hebrew word is always pronounced with the short slurred sound. Like m, uh, uh. If it's the first vowel in a word after the consonant, because you have consonant vowel in Hebrew, consonant vowel, consonant vowel, it says uh, like m, m, l, g, d, b. If the shiva is at the end of a word, it is usually, well, it's always silent and is not pronounced. It just <clears throat> kind of is a definitive, like ends that word. So, for example, if I have a sheen, the a sound like a zapatek, and a tet with a shiva, we just say shat. We don't say shata. You don't pronounce the shiva if it's at the end of a word. If the shiva is in a chet, which we just read in the last chapter at the end form, no pronunciation. There's no sound. When a shiva appears in the middle of a word, it usually falls at the end of a syllable and is not pronounced. So, when you have two syllables in a world, word, and you're going to see this on the first line on page 17, con cave. You don't say con a cave. You don't say con a cave. You say con cave. So what we have is at the end, if, if it's the second vowel or like in the middle of a word and you have a consonant, vowel, consonant, shava, consonant, vowel, consonant, shava, you pronounce the consonant, the vowel and the consonant, but that shava is silent. A syllable in Hebrew is typically comp comprised of either a consonant vowel or consonant vowel consonant. So when you have consonant vowel consonant shava, that is a closed syllable consonant vowel consonant. The shava is silent and it kind of like closes up that word, just boop. So con, k. And then we have car, pool. We do not say kana cave. We say kan cave. You'll see what I'm talking about when you get your book in 17. Now, <clears throat> go ahead, Danielle, on the where it says read the following words aloud, the second line of Hebrew letters on page 17 from the right to the left. Let's read those. Are you talking about where it says yeesh? Yeah, 
Nope. But what, 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 you don't say, uh, remember we just talked about that. You don't say yish te. It's yish te. Yish, yish te. You got it. Because that shava is at the end of a consonant vowel consonant set. Okay, good job. So go ahead and read those, sweetie. I'm not going to say I'm as good as you, but. Um, you will do fine. You'll do great. La, la fal nu. Na -fal, na, well, that was nafal. Oh, yeah, you said nafal. Did you say? No, oh, I said la. I said l. I thought you said nafal nu. Nafal nu. Nafal nu. Nafal nu. Mean ha. Good job. Ev. Ev ne. Good job. An she. An she. Yep. An she. Sam tem. Right. Notice when it was in the middle of the word, we did not pronounce the shava. It didn't give us any, any um, vowel qualities. Now, when you have two shavas side by side in the middle of the word, the first shava is silent. The second shava has the, the schwa sound, the, the slurred sound. So when we say this one, kan summate, kan that first shiva at the end of kan, not pronounced. S, second one is pronounced. Mate. Kan, su, mate. So now we'll read the following line loud. Um, and then go ahead, Danielle, read the following line. This will really help because this one, we need to really to stress that the first shiva is silent. The second shiva has that schwa sound. Okay. Yik. Yik tavu. Yep. Yik tavu. Yik, Yik tavu. tavu. Kad shen. Kad shika. Kad, kad shika. Yep. Kad shika. Kad shika. Okay. Yep. Yish maru. Good job. Yish maru. Til bashu. Til bashu. Til bashu. Yep. Good job. Rag lechem. Yep. Rag lechem. Rag lechem. So all of those are actually words. So you'll find those later. Now they're going to have you do reading practice. We're not going to go through all those. They're going to have you practice using the shiva, and then they're going to. That's just a lot of reading practice. Again, I'm going to suggest not skipping it. On page 18, some letters, the aleph. Hey, ayin and ket are difficult to pronounce with the shava. In words where these four letters have a shava, a full vowel is added to the shava to make it easier to pronounce the syllable. So when the shava appears next to the vowel a ah, or the vowel e, eh, it sounds like a hurried a ah, or e. Eh. For example, it shows you the three dots which say e. Eh, but then if you have the three dots with the shava, it's like, eh, it's, it's faster. And so when you have a, um, I can't remember the name of it right now. I think it's a patek, but a, there's a, there's all these vowels have sound names and I'm just forgetting right now, but the, ah, if you put it with the shava at the end, it's a shorter, more hurried, ah. So instead of, ah, ah, we're going to say, ah, ah, we just say it really fast. Like, ad, 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 instead of, ah, ah. Ad. You just say it faster. When the shava appears next to the vowel that looks like a T that says ah, it actually now sounds like an O. Oh. This is the one that changes the sound. The rest of them sound exactly like that letter looks without the shava. Whatever that vowel sound makes when it doesn't have a shava is the same until it's the little one that looks like a T that says ah. Once it has the shava behind that T letter, it says O. Oh. And so that's what it goes through here with you. Um, you're going to be able to do that with your reading practice. Okay. So practice, practice, practice. If you have questions, reach out. Page 18 at the bottom, it talks about the syllables. A syllable, a Hebrew syllable always begins with a consonant. In English, that's not the case. We can say, we can always start with a vowel in English. Like, amen, omer, we, the way we pronounce things. 
In Hebrew, a syllable always begins with a consonant. So if you have a no sound, it is going to have an aleph or an ayin. Okay, just remember that. That will tell you about the construct of Hebrew so you understand that, again, we can't get the word Yahuwah. It doesn't work. Um, so a consonant plus a vowel. If we have the sheen and an ah sound, it's sha. A consonant plus a vowel plus a consonant works. You can have consonant, vowel, consonant. You can have consonant, vowel, consonant, shava. But you can't have consonant, vowel, consonant, cons uh, vowel. Okay? If you do, uh, well, you can, but that is another syllable, is my point. If you have consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, and then consonant, vowel, consonant, that's that's fine because you have open syllable, open syllable, closed syllable. An open syllable is a consonant, vowel. A closed syllable is consonant, vowel, consonant. You think about the consonants kind of being the hard things, like the bricks of the word. They squish together and hold the word together. So when we say like Torah, we have one open syllable, one closed syllable. When you say the word um, Abba, you have one closed syllable, one open syllable. Sometimes you have Mish, Pa, Cha. You can have closed, open, open. You can have, do you see what I'm saying? But you can't have three open. You can't say Yahuwa. You have to have at least one closed syllable in there. You will see that with every with every word. I'm pointing this out, stressing it to you so nobody deceives you who doesn't understand. They will put everybody on the internet pretends they're they they, they know what they're talking about. And off the internet. Exactly. <laughs> and everybody, like honestly, is so scary. There's so much stuff. Everybody says, oh, read the apocrypha. No, the apocrypha was rejected by both the Protestants. And the Jews who understood the Torah is what matters. The Apocrypha contradicts the Torah, but Catholics had no problem with contradicting the Torah. So the Catholics accept the Apocrypha. Like people try to say that Paul quoted from the book of the, from the Apocrypha, phony baloney. No, he didn't. He didn't. So I just don't want you guys to be deceived. And I want you to be able to see things that are spoken to you. That's why I, I know that Yahuwah doesn't work. Yehovah could work. Let me pause for a minute, actually. When we now you know all the Hebrew letters. When you see the sacred tetragram name of Yahweh, Gold, He, Vav, He. We have at the heart of this the letters He, Vav, He. Hava is the Hebrew word that is our to be verb. I am, I was, I will be, he was, he, he is, he, he is, he was, he will be, she, right? Hava is the sense of to be. So when we see Yahweh's, and then you put the yod at the beginning of the word, Easy. he was, he is, or he is, he was, he is to be, right? So Yahweh or Yehovah, that root word Yehovah there, is the central set of significance of the God is, all eternal, all being, and the very essence of being. Isn't that beautiful? That's so beautiful to me. Um, that's and then when he says he will be a yeah, a share a yes, he says, I will be who I will be. He doesn't say I am. Really and then the when he pronounces his name or Don't. presents his name, he he uses his name is the very essence of to be. Like when you're saying Yahweh or Yehovah, you were saying he was, he is, he is to come. I think that's gorgeous. I think it's beautiful. I think you should know that. Yahuwah doesn't mean that. Yahuwah doesn't mean that. You don't have to, it just doesn't mean that. It's like, so then you're missing part of it. Okay. <clears throat> um, It is often easier to read Hebrew words that have letters when they are broken into syllables. So sometimes they will break these words into syllables for you to kind of see how they work. Um, Like Yishrael, y I'm sorry, Yisrael, Mishpat, um, Yitzchak. It'll show you those things on page 19. Um, there we go. It's the accents. Hebrew words are normally pronounced with the accent on the last syllable, Torah. We don't say Torah. I do in English often on my reel say Torah because that's what people understand. But Torah is how you say it in Hebrew. Torah. Torah. Um, if the accent is not on the last syllable, this book will put an accent mark over the syllable that should be accented but it is not there in normal written liturgical Hebrew, okay? So when you read the biblical version of Hebrew, you won't see the accent sign. They're simply putting it in this 
textbook to help you recognize it. Then we go on to page 19 at the bottom, the last letters. When the last letter of a word is the chet, and the vowel underneath is a, um, good. Um, then the combination is ach. Okay, so when it has the shava, it's ha. When it's, when it's, okay, different letters here. So when we have the chaf at the end of the word opens up, it becomes lecha, ha, with the shava. This one is like ach, ach, like bach. And when you see it at the end of a word, that ah sound under it, it's, you actually do it reverse order. You do ru, and then you say the vowel first and go up to that end consonant. So ruach. Like ruach hakodesh, the holy, the set apart wind, and so koach. When you see the ah under it, it doesn't say ruha; it says ruach, and it doesn't say kocha; it says koach. Pay attention to that as you're reading these words, because um, then you're going to say noach. For noah is noach; it's not nocha. And so when you see that combination of the um, um, chet at the end of a word with the ah sound under it, remember it's not ha, it's ah. And you're going to understand, those of you who don't have the book yet, you'll understand when you're looking at it. Now, we have the vowel ah with the yod, and it just says ai, like mai. It has a little bit of a ai sound. Um Bait, bait, the, the word for house in Hebrew uses that. The vowel O, um, it can also be an O with a yod. It says oi, like um, soil, boy. Again, you'll understand when you look at it. The dagesh is the dot in the center of a letter. Some words, it changes the sound. We've talked about those at the beginning, where the same letter bet or vet, if it has a dagesh, it's b. Without the dagesh, it's v. Those letters are pronounced are sit here are put here for you. Um, the gimel doesn't change no matter what you do. The dalet doesn't change, um, and they're called the beged. The, they're called the beged kafet letters. The beged kafet tell you what Hebrew letters actually get the dagesh. So when the b when the um, the b gets it, it does change sound. When the um, gimel gets it, no change in sound. When the dalet gets it. No change in sound, but when the um, when the chet gets it, did I do that right? No, kof, kof. When the kof gets it, sorry, I'm like brain dead. When the kof gets it, it does change from k to ch, and then when the pe gets it, it goes from p to f, and then when the tet gets it, no change. So practice these, pay attention to these, and they're going to give you just some practice reading over here. Then it talks about the five gutturals. These are the ones that get the more, like the, right? The gutturals. They they don't take a dagesh ever. You've got the ayin, the he, the chet, the, um, I'm sorry, the aleph, the he, the chet, ayin, and reish. Rosh, reish, reish, reish. Rosh is head, sorry. Um, those are gutturals. So the, the R doesn't say, we don't say, rain. we say rain in America. It's going to be rain. Rain. It comes from back here. The gutturals come from more of your throat back, back here. So, baruch, ata, um, baruch, um, baruch. The R is back there too. Baruch, baruch, baruch. It's more back here at the guttural sound. So, that's what it's talking about the guttural. It's more of a throaty sound at the back. I studied linguistics for years, so I love stuff like that. If you've studied like um, Hmong or any of those languages, it's really fun to see how they tone use tonal sounds hebrew doesn't necessarily use the tonal but it uses the voice box you throw some vowels from some sounds from the back of the throat some sounds from the front baruchata baruchata um some sounds are back here some are at the front um much more than english lots of reading practice we're going to stop that for tonight i'm going to stop the recording here in a bit what I want you to do is practice, practice, practice chapters one through three. That's the Aleph, but that's the foundation. That's your kindergarten Hebrew. When you know those letters and you can pronounce the combinations of letters, then we're going to go on to chapter four, where we begin learning vocabulary and sentence structure. And um, we start learning about verb tense, the, the perfect tense in the Hebrew. And that's when we start implementing it. 
But until you have a solid foundation of the first eight chapters, you really shouldn't go on because you need to know the ABCs, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, before we go on. Okay, any questions pertinent to this before I stop the recording? Anything you think might help people or clarification needed? Let me show the book one more time. It is the first Hebrew primer, third edition, Simon Reznikov and Moskin. It's really a good book. Um, feel free to get That's any sorted. instruments that you need. Um, there's the, like I said, the answer guide. There is an audible. I didn't think the audible download was that great with it, but I did get it. Um, and then there's the flashcards that Cassandra has. Okay. It's not hard, you guys can do it and the Holy Spirit will lead you. So reach out if you have questions. I'm going to stop the recording now just for a few later and we can pray if you guys need after this. Nope, I pushed the wrong button. Let me do that. Um, Yes, I thought I was being all good at this. Oh, there's my recording button. Stop. You sure you want to stop recording? Yes.